Welcome back to Generic Expats. We are continuing Meet the Expat Community Series and we're going to be including my new guest here and we're going to be walking through this establishment called... Las Palmas. Las Palmas. All right, let's go. Let's walk through. Welcome to Las Palmas. This is your house. <laughs> And welcome. I am blessed to have the company of a new friend that is going to give us some information regarding living here in Antigua. We're going to continue the series that I just started, which is Meet the Expat Community. And today we have this lovely lady here. Please could you tell us what your name is and where you're from and how long you've been in Antigua for? Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Linda Conard and I'm from Pennsylvania originally and Virginia right after that and I've been living here for 12 years okay 12 years so a dozen a, a dozen. dozen years well all right let's talk about how you ended up coming here because that is always a fascinating point of conversation right what brought you down here to Antigua well I was I came down initially like most people just to visit just to see a new country a new place and uh, to study Spanish I wanted to learn Spanish and I just fell in love with it, really, and met some people while I was here. Uh, just got into conversations with different people with my very, very limited Spanish at the time. Uh, and then um, also got introduced to an NGO that was working here and was very interested in the work they were doing. Um, it was out at the lake, uh, Lake Catitlan. Uh, but um, I really loved Antigua. I also had climbed Pacaya oh. and fell and burned myself. Oh no! And so that started a whole lot of conversations with people. Yeah. And as a result, I got more connected with the people here, I think, and um, got, uh, I don't know, just felt a little bit more and more at home here. So having burnt myself on, I didn't burn myself on the lava, but on the hot rocks. Whoa. Um, and, That's uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that burn actually helped me find a new home. Mm. Um, once I was back up in the States, I kind of realized that I loved some of the, I started volunteering and work with the NGO and I found I loved the work with the NGO more than I was really enjoying my full-time job and realized that you could actually live here and telecommute part-time and then do the volunteer work the other part of the time. What is this topic of telecommuting? I'm not quite sure what that actually is. Okay, well telecommuting in my case is uh, I'm an editor and so I basically can take my computer and work anywhere. Um, oh, okay. So. so it's kind of like working online, working as a, what a lot of people call digital nomad, is that similar? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's uh, nowadays they call it digital nomad. Back okay. then it was they just called it telecommuting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because of because the telephone, right? Okay, I think that's maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe that was it. Yeah. Or, I'm not sure exactly what the uh, how the different names are. It seems like the same thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's that's quite an interesting story. Was this trip down here to Antigua was this your first trip to Latin America, or had you already been to like Mexico or South America or something? Uh, this was not my first trip. I had gone to uh, Honduras, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Panama. Oh, okay. um, so Guatemala was toward the end of, of my list. Uh, not intentionally, but because the year before I came here, they had a huge storm, and so I had to put it off. But okay. All right. Yeah. So interesting that you actually were here studying because this is something that a uh, different guest had mentioned. Alex mentioned, yeah, most people come down here to study and they stay. <laughs> That's exactly what your <laughs> yeah. story is. Yeah. That's super funny. Well, your Spanish is great. I heard you speaking Spanish earlier. It's really good. And um, still working on it. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's a process. You know, I, I studied it at the university, so like, mine should be better than it is. But it's, it's, it's okay. Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Anyway, so you ended up coming here and staying because of this experience you had, the, the cultural uh, experience, the, the place. What, what other things did you like about the city? Oh, wow. What did I... I liked... I just, you know, I, the people here are just very kind. I mean, I suppose you hear that from everybody. <laughs> I bet you do. And uh, it's just... There's something very uh, welcoming. And they tolerate... <laughs> into my bad Spanish for one thing and really did people would stop me and give me advice on what to do about my burned arm and mm. things like that 
Um, Did you find that a big difference, the way people acted to you compared to back at home in Pennsylvania and Virginia? Uh, perhaps a little bit, yeah, because I'm from the city most of the time, you know, so I worked in Washington, D.C., and I lived in Center City, Philadelphia, and necessarily people were a little bit more, um, private, they keep themselves a little bit more closed to kind of protect themselves, and here, I think people are a little bit more open, you see them on the streets, they say hi, they're, you know, everybody says, buenas tardes, all that, you know, it's just, there's a little bit more of that idea that, we're human beings, high human, high human, you know, which you don't maybe see so much in the heart of Philadelphia all the time. Sure. In bigger cities, maybe there's a bit more of a judgment or trying to show who you are to like gain people's acceptance. Whereas here it's kind of like a, yeah, human, high human, hey, regular person, <laughs> you know, I, I can see, I can understand exactly that too. That, yeah. And um, so when you first came here, um, how long did you stay for when you were studying? Uh, my first visit, I think, was about three weeks, oh. and then when I got involved with the nonprofit organization, I kept um, coming down with them to to visit their work and also to volunteer with them uh, for a few weeks at a time. So that was 2009, my first visit, and then by 2011, I was selling my house and well, I went well, didn't sell, I rented out my house and packing my bags and um, emptying my house um, and uh, moving down here and with the idea of staying for two years, oh, okay. not 12. <laughs> so, Do you still have your house now? Are you still renting it or did you sell it? I sold it last year. Last year. So, oh, at the yeah. height of the market. At there the, you go. <laughs> yeah. yes. Big money. It's, exactly. That was, that was the idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you have your, your house no longer being rented you have that sold and you told me before you are not you don't you didn't buy a property here you are renting here as well right yes that's right I rent here still mm -hmm. okay so is there a benefit for renting in in, in comparison to buying a property here why, why didn't you buy one here um, I didn't buy one here I mean I think it depends on your circumstances in my case I was basically making more money from the rent and from the value that properties in Washington DC were skyrocketing sure. um, in that area so it was beneficial my rent was so low that it actually was beneficial to me now as I'm close closing in on retirement I'm holding that the money that I gained from that aside to live on in the future oh, okay. so are you planning to continue renting like like you are now so far so good yeah <laughs> we'll see if they raise my rent <laughs> I, I don't right. know. Yeah, you mentioned you have a pretty good price huh yes yes <laughs> i have a, a very good price do you mind mentioning what the what that is the the price you pay per month what and what it includes uh yeah i'll, I'll say this but I'll, I'll explain a little bit about it um sure. i pay 550 dollars a month which is exceedingly low right now um for some reason my landlords have uh chosen not to raise my rent on me in is the it last a house or apartment what is it it's a little casita it's a house with uh, two bedrooms wow, and two yeah bedrooms. uh yeah. very uh, people tell me i have the best deal in antigua sure so i don't house. um <laughs> i i don't want people to expect that they're going to come down and find that price i'm seeing more like seven fit for the similar apartment 750 850 and up Mm. Um, now. Well, there's typically always a deal for people that look for them. I found a deal where I'm staying, which yeah. is definitely not the, the price for, uh, I have like a studio apartment and mm. I pay really little. I pay 250 <laughs> So it's, that's it's super low. But then again, I mean, these are really difficult to find and, you know, mm -hmm. they don't, maybe long-term contracts are, are cheaper even. So I don't know. It depends on who you talk to, where you want to stay, because I'm staying in Santa Ana. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so it's not really anywhere inside the, the downtown area. Mm -hmm. It's far away, but I use my motorcycle to get around, so it's, it's zero, zero problems for me, you know? Yeah. So continuing on with this, uh, this idea about where you're living, um, are you pretty happy with the, the accommodation you have, the, the zone? The, what is the name of the neighborhood you're staying in now? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure the name of the uh, neighborhood I'm staying in, but it's in the in the area of um, I guess most people know uh, Espiritu Santo, that area. I would just say southwest. Southwest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And do you think it's a pretty safe part of the city? How do you feel living there? Uh, I'd say it's a, it, it gets a little quiet at night, and so I, when I'm coming home at night, I make sure that I get transportation if I'm coming home by myself. It's not. People worry about safety, and I, I think as long as you're smart, you're fine most of the time. But it's, uh, I definitely, myself, once it gets dark, 
I'm not going to go walking in my even in my neighborhood. I here in the Costco in the in the heart of Antigua. Yeah, I mean people can walk pretty late, and there's just people all over, all over the place. But my area is quieter, and that's a benefit. But at night, you just need to take transportation. Has has anything happened in your neighborhood that? In the, you've been living there, you said, like 10 or 11 years. Has anything happened in that neighborhood that you heard of or like robberies or bad, bad things happening that maybe causes you to have that precaution? Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple. A friend of mine was robbed on the street, actually in broad daylight. Um, and, uh, was this a long time ago? Because Alex told me that when he first moved here 15 years ago, he said about 13 years ago, it was quite rough in this city. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was maybe six, seven years ago. Okay. Um, there have been a couple things, but uh, nobody that I know of has been injured. It's all material things. Somebody is threatening them and they hand over their cell phone. And that's, you know, so... Pretty classic robbery here in Latin America, just pretending to have a weapon or having a weapon and then just give me your stuff and yeah, you just give it to them and nothing happens. And nothing ha- exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. So yeah, sometimes I've heard like there are some dangerous places, for example, Volcan de Agua, I'm not sure where it is, I think it's wherever, over there, yeah. So I've heard people got robbed there and Alex mentioned, yeah, there's some, you know, there's some like gangsters or whatever. And mm-hmm. you said, you know, there must be gangsters around here. Uh, some people mentioned near the Cruz, Cerro de la Cruz, there may, wherever, that, <laughs> wherever that is, I don't know. Uh, they, some people mentioned there might be like kind of some, you know, thugs or whatever that mm-hmm. live or, or hang out around there. So mm-hmm. are there any like suggestions you have for people looking for accommodation? Is, is there a good place to, to rent, like a best place that in your, in your point of view? Mm. Um... I don't really, best place to rent. It's become, I'll say this, it's become a little harder over the last few years because what's happening is people are buying up properties and then using them as Airbnb. And that nets them more money a lot of the time. So you don't blame them for doing it on one hand, but it's really shrunk the market of available Mm -hmm. long-term. So it kind of depends. There's residenciales that uh, those are like, um, gated communities would be the right phrase. Um, mm, right. And so a lot of people prefer to start out in places like that because they feel a little bit safer. There's usually some kind of security uh, presence there. Um, Private communities are quite a bit more expensive though, usually, right? Yes, they tend to be more expensive. If you can find an individual place that's not in a, in a private community like that, you usually do find a lower rent. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to your story and let's talk about what you're doing now. You are involved in some activities, in some organizations, some events. What, t- t- let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, well, most of the, my current activity, um, I had started a website called livefromantigua.com. Um, and it, the idea behind it is the fact that there is, like here we are in Las Palmas, they have live music every day, all the time, and you don't hear about it, you don't know about it. So there's another place, you know, Cerveceria Catorce, you've got the Snug, there's all these different restaurants and bars that are having live music every single day or dancing, and nobody knew about it. What are the main bars and restaurants the expats go to? You mentioned Cerveceria Catorce, which is the 14 like beer shop or beer craft brewery, and then Thug, Snug. Snug. What is it? <laughs> I was like Snug. Thug or who? What <laughs> gangster? No, no, it's Snug. Okay, Snug. Right, so it's, it's it's these That's three it. places or four? Are, are there like four main places people go to? Well, there's a number of different places. I wouldn't say there's there's any specific main places. Okay. Um, the Snug is an Irish. Uh, bar owned by an Irish guy oh, okay, and great. so that's really finally cool. an Irish bar by an Irish person right because in, in Minnesota where I'm from it's like Irish pub and it's like who's the owner some guy from Minnesota right, right, <laughs> it's like yeah, oh, okay exactly. great <laughs> and he's actually from German heritage or yeah, something right, yeah right. exactly <laughs> so the main places that you that you post on your website are there some repeat oh, offenders on this yes lots yeah um you definitely is Cerveceria Catorce and the Snug uh El Deposito um here at Las Palmas um there's, uh, there's a place called Cerro San Cristobal that's up that way. Um, and uh, they have live music on the weekends. It's a little bit more kickback and chill. I was talking with you about a place called uh, El Bosque de Antigua Cerveza, right. which is like a big wooded area, but has uh, 
there they have craft beer there too and picnic tables and all sorts of things so people can just go hang out they have little barbecue areas um, there's and th then there's places like the bullseye sports pub El milagro um, I mean I, I, Angie Angie it, it's there's so much there's so how, how long have you been managing and doing this site for well, I started the site in January 2020, which is a really good time to start an entertainment <laughs> site. <laughs> um, hey. uh, but uh, eventually it actually did pick up a little bit. So it's after, been three years in a way. <laughs> after the pandemic started kind of yes. lightening up, you're like, yes. okay, finally you can do something. Right? Exactly, because yeah, okay. nobody could even go out. So mm -hmm. I was, yeah, that, that wasn't really great. But the whole idea behind it is to make sure that the You've got, you know, people who want to hear music and musicians who want to perform and restaurants who want people to come in and that all converges on that site hmm. where people can find what they're looking for. It's a calendar. So that takes a lot of my time, actually. Yeah, sure, sure. I can imagine, yeah. But, um, so let's talk a little bit about the place we're at now because <clears throat> you suggested this place and I, I really like it. We walked around and we checked out the, the different rooms. I'll show that in the video here. So let's let's talk about this place. Have you come here many times and what, what do you typically expect from this place? Yeah, I come here mostly up here in the terrace because I like, they have, um, on Thursday nights they have live jazz. Mm, uh, nice. On Thursday, Friday, excuse me, Friday, Saturday they have other kinds of uh, music, usually some kind of rock or Latin rock or um, it's just, it's nice to kind of get away and up here it's a little bit, I can't think of the word right now, but um, off the beaten path, even though you're right a block from Parque Central. The way I saw it, the different rooms and how they are divided, it makes it seem like you're, yeah, like you're not even in, and we, we can't hear the traffic in Antigua. I mean, we can obviously see behind us that the ruins, which are the big, you know, the big part of what Antigua is, right? A big city of tons of ruins. We couldn't figure out the name of this ruins, could we? <laughs> this one right in front. Oh, the backdrop. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> we looked on the map, couldn't find it. But yeah, so I, I totally agree. Like here, being here, it's like kind of interesting. You can see the mountains, but you don't hear the traffic, which is a really nice atmosphere for hanging out, having some drinks, talking. Yeah, I enjoy it. Do you typically come on the jazz night, or which nights do you normally come on? I uh, normally would come on the jazz nights. Now, the other thing that they're, what they're really known for here is the they have the salsa from five to six. They have that's lessons, and then they have live salsa music from nine to eleven and on because the doors close at eleven, and then people continue dancing. Uh, but that's what this place is really really known for the live salsa music. Is the salsa dancing on this terrace up, no, up top? Downstairs. downstairs. Yeah downstairs. I was gonna say like yeah probably not that up here. Be <laughs> <laughs> It'd be difficult yeah <laughs> the wood floors up here yeah. Okay yeah I, I uh you introduced the owner here is he a friend of yours? Yes yes that's Rene and he's he's a friend and uh yeah he's been he's owned this place for 20 years 20 and years. Uh, really done a lot to to change it and make it what it is. Right. You, you mentioned it was a hostel before, and <clears throat> it te definitely has kind of a hostel vibe, but it's really beautiful and has great little at small, like, individual micro-atmospheres in each different part of the restaurant. It's really cool. Okay, one topic that people need to know when moving to a new place is affordability and what certain things costs when you're going to a new country, a new city. Um, we're using quetzales here, which the quetzal is, I think, 7.7 .7 to the dollar or something like that. Yeah. It barely moves, which is kind of nice because in Mexico, the peso has skyrocketed and the yeah. dollar has plummeted. Yeah. <laughs> so people living there in Mexico are like, oh my God. And that's why I like showing off new countries outside of Mexico. Mexico is not the only place people can go to to retire or move to and have a great quality of life. I mean, a little bit further south is Guatemala. And it's yeah. the the the... The currency is pretty flat. It's not been up or down much, so that's that's a benefit for us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about cost of living. What is the typical cost per month, you could say, of having a good 
good quality of life, going out every so often, having a good accommodation, maybe some entertainment stuff, or maybe some going out to bars or maybe going on hikes or going on excursions. What, what do you think would be a, a good amount that people would expect to pay here? Oh boy, uh, that varies. That that uh, varies a lot depending on the person. Because yeah, yeah. every time I uh, <coughs> that discussion comes up, we've got some people that say, "Oh, I live on fifteen hundred dollars a month," and I go, "Really? You know? Um, did, have you actually written that down?" But um, I find uh, probably. It, it depends on the rent and all sorts of other things. Let's talk about not super, super, like humble, mm -hmm. you know, low cost, whatever, and not super, super high cost. Let's try and just get kind of an average. Okay. Um, I'm just real bad at this because uh, certain things that I spend my money on that others might not. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, I'm going to just guess at like $2,500, $3,000 a month. Per, per person or per couple? Oh. I don't know what a couple is. <laughs> um, so you think it takes about 2500 to live really well here? I mean, going we don't really we, well. it doesn't have to be going out every day. We're talking right. maybe a couple days a week, going to a movie yeah. or going on an excursion once a month or once every couple of weeks and, you know, eat, maybe cooking at home, going to bodegona wherever yeah. to buy their, you know, their local produce and stuff. You think 2500 is around? But? Yeah, I would say, you know, assuming, say, your rent is about, let's say, let's say $750, $800. Yeah. There's no, you don't have heat uh, in the house and you don't have electricity. Yeah, I mean, excuse me, you do have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those countries like Africa, no electricity, no internet. <laughs> <laughs> you do have internet if you, if you uh, buy a plan. Um, but uh, you don't have air conditioning is what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so you're... Your costs, uh, your your monthly costs are basically your rent, and it's a walkable town, so a lot of people don't have transportation here in town. So you're just paying for your your rent, your entertainment. A lot of people have help in the house um, that helps out the local economy. So um, generally speaking, if you have the wherewithal to to hire somebody to clean your house, you're actually doing them a favor uh, by hiring them. So it's it's a good thing to to do. So I'd say, you know, and then going out, uh, depending how often you want to go out. I mean, I, I'm thinking 2500 would probably be okay. Are these prices that you're talking about now and this cost, is it way higher than it was before? I mean, obviously inflation is a slow thing over time and everything is always more expensive over time usually, unless the country's economy goes down, but it seems pretty flat here. So is this way higher than it was when you first moved here? Like, could you buy way more with a thousand or two thousand five hundred in the in the past when you first came yeah absolutely in terms of things like the the rents have gone up almost doubled um or maybe even doubled um the uh, the food costs are going up right now just like everywhere in the world yeah, it's yeah. not it's kind of a, a global thing um so uh some of the health care course costs are going up uh health care here is still relatively cheap just had a battery of tests done and it's like, oh, you know, we're going to have to charge you extra for that. It's going to be $60 for all of them. <laughs> okay, $60. Wow. I mean, up in the States, you can't get in the door at the doctor's office um, yeah, for right. $60. Like so, or right? yeah, so there's a lot of, um, uh, there, that's still relatively low. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but it's, it's gone up. And I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to want to smack me across the face and they... <laughs> I say 2500 they're going to be like, what do you mean 2500 I can't make it on 2500 And then other people are going to say, that's way more than I spend. Yeah, so. right. It really does depend on your lifestyle. But yeah, I think that's a pretty good average cost. Mm -hmm. My other guest mentioned even lower number. And I was like, oh, yeah. well, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's really relative. So I just wanted to get your point of view on that. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about living here and quality of life, uh, one thing that makes your life better is having lots of friends and meeting new people. So... How is it meeting the people in this expat community? Is it easy? And what type of platforms have you used to meet people that you are now friends with and hanging out with? Um, I think it's easier to meet people here than it is in the States, for example, um, in terms of people are much more comfortable just you run into somebody, you start a conversation, you say, hey, you know, I'm going to go over to this place where they're, you know, they're having live music tonight. Um, why don't you come join us? And people are, they're not afraid to do that. Where they seem to be in the States, it's sort of like, well, what is it you want from me? Right. You know, <laughs> um, why are you asking me? What, you know? So 
I find that a lot of times just getting into conversations with people, you can you meet people that way. Also, though, what helps is to just join things, like do some volunteer work. Um, there's plenty of places where you can choose to do that, and you meet the people that are there and the other volunteers, and you pick up things that way. Um, there's groups that you know do little meetups. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, Facebook pages. You know, there's um, a group called Expats Living in Guatemala, which is how we met. <laughs> which is how we met exactly, and I don't know. They're well over ten thousand members now, I think, and um, they, you know, so there you'll hear about different activities going on and things that you can participate in. Um, there's an, other groups like uh, there's a group about, uh, it's called Girlfriends in Antigua, I think, and it's just a women's group in Antigua. There, so if you go, especially for some reason down here, more so than in the U.S., Facebook seems to be a little bit more of a connection than I think up in the U.S. everybody's switching over to Instagram. <laughs> How about you personally? What has been the platform or group or the place or like activity that has allowed you to meet the most amount of people? Uh, the thing that meeting the most people, um, I suppose, well, I started out, there was a, and, and forgive me for sounding political for a minute here, but a group called Democrats Abroad, um, and it is mostly about registering people to vote from whatever party. That's their, their real goal. So, uh, but they have other, other goals that deal with the party as well. Uh, but I met people through that. But I also met people, what happens is you usually you meet one or two people and they say, hey, I'm going to a party. When I go, you go to the party, you meet a bunch of other people. And it just, I mean, I, you know, I feel like I have more connections here than I ever had in the States. I do understand what you're talking about. And I felt that everywhere I've been outside the U.S. When you're outside the country, my feeling and I think what you're expressing now is that you kind of have like a we're in this together type of thing like we're we're all foreigners here yes. like we're not locals this is everything is new to us or slightly new or depending on how long you've been so it's kind of like a more like a camaraderie with the other foreigners especially the ones that are living here I mean the people for me I don't really reach out too much to meet people because I usually stay short term in places mm -hmm. talking to tourists like they're leaving tomorrow Right. Why would you talk to someone that's leaving in 12 hours? It's like, okay, well, you can have a nice conversation, but having a friendship with that situation is complicated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you kind of have this idea of, okay, we're, we're both living here. We're both maybe confronting the same obstacles, so mm -hmm. we can talk about that. And, yeah, I understand. I lived five years in Vietnam, so when I had my friends, it's like, we're talking about the, you know, the benefits... You know, advantages, disadvantages, and all this stuff. So I understand that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> are there any tips you want to give to people that are thinking about moving down here? Uh, thinking about moving down here, I've actually met people who've moved down here without ever having set foot here. Um, and it sometimes works, but I'd say come for a month. Come for, you know, come, or I, like I did, come multiple times. Experience it in different seasons, in different ways, maybe different parts of town get to know the place before you commit to, to the move. Um, we had talked earlier about, you know, it's really helpful to learn some Spanish, not just because, you know, I mean, it's helpful in general and it's respectful to the people, but it's also, you get a much different flavor of the place when you can converse with the people and hear their stories, not just order drinks, <laughs> you know. So if, Una cerveza. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So learning this uh, Spanish is, is a really, really big help. Um, ask questions before, you know, go on a site like uh, a, a Facebook page, like uh, join expats living in Guatemala and ask some questions. Um, you know, it's like any group. There's going to be people who get, you know, oh, this question has been asked a dozen times before. <laughs> okay. So now it's a dozen and one. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> it's okay, you know, just let that roll off your back. And, and that's the other thing, I guess, living once you get here, is to let things roll off your back a bit. It's, it's different. That's why you came, <laughs> you know, so. You have to be flexible when things are very, very different. I'm, I consider myself very, very flexible, and I think that's a huge advantage I have, you know, a, a massive strength. Mm -hmm. So what, what was the best resource that you've been using since moving here? Is it probably that Facebook group, or is there, are there other ones? 
Yeah, that's that's probably the best resource that I've had for just learning. You know, you say, I don't know where to get such and such thing that I need to make this recipe I'm making. <laughs> or, you know, where where is, um, what's going on with the buses today? It doesn't seem to be running the same way as right. usual. Or, you know, is there something going on with the volcano? Um, people, that's where I get like that little insider news that otherwise you, it's not in the newspaper and you're not going to hear about it anywhere else. I also just, I feel like my, my website is another place or where, where people are getting information um, yeah. because um, there, it isn't anywhere else. They don't know where to find it. But I, you know, if I were only to pick one, actually, I would pick the expats living in Guatemala. Okay. <laughs> that would be number one. Now that you've been here for quite a while, have you thought about leaving? And if so, where would you possibly move to if you would leave? Would you go back to the U.S.? Would you go to another country in Latin America? You speak Spanish, so maybe El Salvador or Costa Rica. Have you thought about that? I've thought a little bit about moving to other countries. Um, every Sometimes I think about going back to the U.S. There's a certain bit of homesickness that comes when you go visit. Um, I do the visa run thing, which is where you, uh, you can renew your visa after 90 days in country and then after another 90 days you have to leave the country. So that's what you've been doing. You don't have residency here. I don't oh, have residency here. That was actually something I was going to ask, <laughs> is that you, you don't, okay, so that's a, one of the styles of living abroad is you have the tourist visa for 90 days and you can mm -hmm. extend. Usually most countries have 30, 90 and 90, some countries have 180 and one, and one visa. So you do that, you leave and you go to Belize or, or I guess Mexico are the only two, right? Nearby. Yeah, nearby, yeah. And then you can come back on bus or whatever. So you do that every every, every time? Six months. Every six months. But most of the time I go back and visit family in the U.S. And you okay. can do that. Now, that's not something that's available. If, for example, I were to move to Europe, their rules, residency rules are totally, totally different. But the Guatemala's rules are actually, I think, pretty lenient in for the region. And uh, so I do that. Um, so when I'm up there, you know, then, then I get a little homes. I get homesick when I'm there, not when I'm here. Mm, yeah. um, you're seeing everything that you're missing. I yes, I see the family and friends that, that uh, I want to spend more time with them, but I also miss here and, you know, <laughs> vice versa. Um, other places I've looked at, though, I've thought about, more often than not, I've thought about Puebla, Mexico, actually, um, just because it's close to the city, uh, Mexico City, and all that's going on there, but it's not in Mexico City. Uh, Are you a foodie? Because Puebla is one of the places for like the gastronomy, best place to eat in all of the country. Are you a big foodie? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I am like, I have such pedestrian food tastes, but I just love the place. It, it, it's a little more like Antigua, but it, it kind of combines Antigua and big city to me. Yeah. Uh, it's got the little pockets where it's sort of touristy, but it's also got the mu live music that comes into town that I really enjoy. Um, so that's one place. Um, I've thought about Oaxaca also in Mexico and Guanajuato, but, um, and I've thought about Spain. So w my focus tends to be, since I spend all the time and I'm spending all the time learning Spanish still, which is an ongoing quest. Um, I focus mostly on Spanish-speaking countries. I don't want to have to go to Greece and start over again. Yeah, yeah. Or you could focus on ones that are similar to Spanish. Mm -hmm. I, I speak Portuguese also. I lived in Brazil. So it's, you, can under, you can understand Portuguese when you hear it, probably. It just takes some practice. And it's one of those things where from Spanish, you can learn a, a couple other ones that are similar, French, Italian, and, and Portuguese. Mm -hmm. I think Portuguese is probably the easiest. That took me about a year to become conversational. Um, so yeah, I mean, I understand that going to Spain. What, why Mexico? Why not uh, further south in Central America? Um... You know, Nicaragua looked really good until the political issues changed. Um, so I guess there was a time when I would have thought of Nicaragua. Costa Rica is expensive. Panama, eh, just, I don't know. I, if I were going to do one of those countries, I guess I would stay in Guatemala. Have you thought about South America? I noticed you haven't mentioned anything about South, South America. Yeah, that's a good, I, I have not actually been to South America yet. So um, I definitely, 
want to hear more about it and learn about it from sites like yours. So that's Let's hope I make it down there in, in one piece because, yeah, to be Colombia and then following the West Coast going down and then crossing into Brazil. Yeah. Oh, no, see, that, that sounds really cool. And yeah. that's, you know, so those are places that I look at and I go, yeah, that's going to be my next trip. And then for some reason I haven't gotten there yet. Well, that's very understandable. I mean, this is my first time in Central America, and I spent five years in South America. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, this is my first time ever in this region. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, And there's so many more countries. I'm going to go to El Salvador next week, and then there's, what, five or four, four more countries below that? I'm like, wow, yeah. crazy. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, are there any last-minute things you would want to maybe say or, or, or tell to anyone that is uh, watching uh, with this channel, watching this, this interview? Um, well, I guess I... What I would want to say is just to uh, to really, you know, investigate things, look into what you're doing, but don't let the fact that it's new scare you off. Um, I came down here, uh, you know, in, in you know when I was 50, so it's something that you're thinking to yourself. I came by myself with my pets, uh, so you may be thinking. Oh, well, I'm, I, I've had so many people go, I wouldn't have the courage to do that. And I go, what courage? You know, I didn't feel like it was a courageous act, and I still don't. But on the other hand, you know, if you're feeling like it's a, you know, it would take you too much courage to do it, like, really, look at, what, what? it's something you can try. If it doesn't work out, where you were is still there. <laughs> so. I guess maybe the way that you moved down here was renting your house out and that gave you the extra money to look around and spend the time here, right? And decide if you wanted to stay. Is that what happened? That's part of it. And then I also was telecommuting. So I was able to, I was able to basically make an income. And that was something that not everybody has that advantage. It's, mm. you know, if you're certain fields, you're in computers, you're an editor, you're a designer, there's things that you can definitely do from abroad that you can't do if you're a chef, um, yeah. you know. So, um, so there's that, and absolutely, people need to look at all of those things in their own lives. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just not to let the fear keep you from investigating it at least a little bit, and then making a decision. I think that's a really good uh, tip, really good advice, and I really want to thank you so much, Linda. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing your story, getting information for the people that are interested in he hearing about Antigua, hearing about Guatemala, and I want to say thank you and nax! <laughs> right in front of the mysterious runes that we don't know. <laughs>